Hey guys, happy Wednesday. So quick word guys, quick word. This is a kind of funny word. I didn't even know I was gonna release this word today. I had actually forgot that I had this dream last night, guys. My face is itching, Holy Spirit. So sometimes, actually all the time, when I'm asleep, guys, I wake up, record a dream on my phone, I go to sleep. I wake up, record a dream on my phone, I go to sleep. And sometimes when I wake up, this is why it's good to either record your dreams as soon as you have them, um, record your prophetic dream, or write it in a journal because sometimes when you wake up, you don't remember those dreams, right? And last night was full of dreams, guys. I actually was dreaming and God was giving me a whole YouTube prophetic word that I was releasing to y'all. I don't know what prophetic word that was for, but legit in my dream, I was talking to you guys. Um, and I know it's not this one that I'm about to release, but I just remembered as I was standing in my kitchen like 20 minutes ago that I had recorded a dream on my phone. I actually recorded two things on my phone last night. Um, one I recorded at 4.50 something in the morning and the next I recorded at 5, 5.01 in the morning. So it was a few minutes apart, but I didn't remember that I recorded it until like 20 minutes ago. So maybe 30 minutes ago. So I listened to it and almost immediately the Lord downloaded the meaning to me because it was a really short dream. Um, so let me give this to you guys so I can try to be on time for Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> which starts in 20 minutes, okay? Um, so last night, guys, I had a dream that Beyonce was doing my hair. It was like I was in one of those makeup studios that actresses go into when they're being like groomed for um, groomed for the set to go on to go and record on whatever movie they're filming. So Beyonce was prepping me. And she was doing my hair and, you know, we were in front of one of those mirrors that have has like the lights around it. It was literally like one of those like dress up rooms that stars go into to get their makeup and stuff done, right? And she was prepping me for a movie role. And she says to me, go find that toy train so that you can go to T's house. She was talking about my ex-husband. She said, go find the toy train so you can go to T's house, right? And I said, okay, I'll find it. But then I said, I don't know where it is. And then she goes, "Never mind. don't worry about it. That was the end of the dream, okay? I woke up, I recorded that dream. And a couple minutes later, I heard the Lord speak. And he said, he needs... N-E-E-D-S, he needs, but you love and preserve. He needs, but you love and preserve, okay? I'm getting chills like over my body. And what this dream meant, guys, is, let me start with Beyonce's name because he's used her in my dreams before. Beyonce's name means beyond others, the one who surpasses them all, okay? Proverbs 31, verse 29. <laughs> Your girls are Proverbs 31. Okay, but this ain't just for me. This is for y'all too. Proverbs 31, verse 29, New King James Version says, Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Again, Beyonce's name means beyond others, the one who surpasses them all. Some versions of Proverbs 31, 29 says, Many daughters have done well, but you surpass them all, okay? Um, so the Lord was speaking to me in this case, and he's used this scripture so many different times to speak to me when it comes to my ex-husband. And he always tells me, um, especially during my marriage stands, he always used to tell me that many daughters have done well, but I surpass them all. And he used to say that whenever I started to feel like inadequate, like, you know, what did I deserve to, to be put through all of this by my ex-husband and so forth? The Lord would always quote this verse to me. And I've used this verse and quite a few prophetic words. Um, and the Lord has always told me he doesn't care how many women my ex-husband has been with, how many women he's dated. He was even married before me, okay? The Lord had told me none of those women 
will ever surpass me, the one that he has chosen. This was never me boasting about myself um, because to be honest, my ex-husband has dated some great women, okay? Some great women. He's just made poor choices, okay? As far as how he treated us. But the Lord always told me I surpassed them all because I was the one who he ordained to be with him. He said, I was the one who stood for my marriage and not because I wanted my ex-husband, but I stood for the marriage because I wanted to please God. I wanted to be that one. If, when God told me to stand for my marriage, to pray for my ex-husband, um, he would wake me up two, three in the morning and I would go into prayer for my ex-husband, guys. And as I, as I would be praying at two, three in the morning, the smoke and fire alarms in my, apartments would start, in my apartment would start going off. It did it in this apartment and my last apartment, guys. I'm not cooking anything in my kitchen at this time of the, the morning for any smoke alarm to go off. But that was the Lord saying, keep praying, it's urgent. You know what I'm saying? So the Lord has always reiterated Proverbs 31, 29 to me because it's not who they choose. It's not who we choose, but it's who God has ordained to be with that person. Okay, and when God asked me to do a thing, when he told me to stand for that marriage, um, many of you have followed me for a while now, I'm no longer a stander. But when he had me standing for that marriage, I didn't like it all the time, but I always prayed for my ex-husband. I always covered him. I stood because I wanted to please God. I didn't stand because I wanted to be back in this marriage. Because to be honest, the more God began to mold me, I started to become unattracted to my ex-husband because spiritually, he did not turn me on, okay? If your soul and your spirit does not turn me on, your physical appearance is shot. Like, I don't want it, right? So as God began to mold me into the woman that he created me to be, I stopped being attracted to my ex-husband the way that I used to be because those things no longer excited me. I no longer became excited just for the physical appearance because you can look good on paper, but if you're spiritually bankrupt, that's a problem for me. I don't want that type of man leading me. Anyway, not to stray too far off, but Proverbs 31, 29 has been something the Lord has constantly reiterated to me during my stance, through this process, through him molding me over and over and over, right? So again, that's what Beyonce's name means. And God always let, leads me to Proverbs 31, 29 to say what he's trying to say to me, okay? In this um, dream, Beyonce was grooming me for a movie role. She was doing my hair, right? She was getting me ready um, for this role. And we all know movie roles are fake. You play the part and when you're done playing the part and the movie's recorded, your job there is done. The people got what they needed from you. You did your role. You go about your business. The movie's released and that's the end of that, right? So she was grooming me for a movie role and she asked me as she's getting me dressed um, or as she's doing my hair, she's like, go find the toy train so that you can get to Cortez's house or... T's house. <laughs> you guys know his name now. So anyway, his name's Cortez, but we call, I call him T. So she's like, go get the toy train so you can go to Cortez's house. So I was like, um, okay, I'll find it. But then I'm like, I don't know where it's at. And she's like, don't worry about it. Guys, me, her grooming me for a movie role and then telling me to get a toy train so that I can go to Cortez's house. In reality, guys, I can't drive no toy train to my ex-husband's house. I won't ever get there. Toy trains are for kids, okay? And what the Lord is saying by just this dream is that when it comes to me being in partnership with my ex-husband, I'm playing a role instead of really walking, in, walking into um, the reality of being a wife, okay? He's saying it's like playing a role, and the Lord did not call me to just play a role for someone. I am a Proverbs 31 woman. Many have done well, but he's saying, you daughter surpass them all like you are a wife. You no longer are going to be a person who has to play a role for someone. And then when that role is done, it, it's finished. You walk away and you go about your business. They go about their business. He's saying he's like, there's been a huge um, area of growth and help me Holy Spirit. There's been a huge area of growth. I'm not here to play anyone's role. I'm not here to play house. 
okay? Um, a toy train can't get me nowhere. But here, Beyonce is saying, Satan is really trying to aggravate me. Everything's falling. Hold on, guys. Here, Beyonce is saying, she's getting me groomed for this role, saying, go, go get a toy train so you can go to Cortez's house, guys. I can't get to his house with no toy train. Toy train is for a kid. I can get there on a real train, not a toy train, okay? And that was just the Lord's way of saying, me connecting myself back to my ex-husband, okay? Me connecting myself back to him will be like playing a role in a movie. It will be short term, okay? It will be short term because his thinking is still as a child, okay? He still thinks as a child. And for this part, I'm going to read um, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11, yeah, verse 11, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things, okay? The Lord is saying he's not where he needs to be, okay? But the Lord has told me several times he will try to come back. But the Lord is speaking loud and clear in this, this dream by saying, you'll be playing the part in a movie, in a role. It will be acting and it will be short term. He still thinks as a child, okay? He has not put away childish things. Hence, go find the toy train so that you can get to Cortez's house, okay? He still thinks like a child, okay? And the Lord was showing me that if I chose to go back and play this role, that's all it will be is playing a role. It won't be for real, okay? I recorded that dream on my phone and then I heard the Lord say, he needs, but you love and preserve. He needs, but you love and preserve. And what the Lord is saying by this part, guys, he was saying, my ex-husband needs, okay? N-E-E-D-S, he needs. And to need something, the definition of, Needing means to lack something. I'm sorry, it means a lack of something desirable or useful. A lack of something desirable or useful. A condition requiring supply or relief to be in want, okay? So what he was saying by this part, he needs, is that he has needs that he wants to meet, okay? He has needs that he wants to meet. He still thinks as a child. So anybody that's not mature in Christ as a man, okay, and we're speaking, I'm speaking from the dreams perspective because we know women could be immature too, but he's saying he still thinks as a child. So he's living life based on what he needs, what provides relief to him. And that could be sexually. That could be the, the feeling of just having someone to call a wife, but not, des not desiring to really be a husband to someone. Okay, he has needs. He needs, okay? What he desires is based on his own selfish needs, his own wants, his desires. It's all about self. When we choose God, we die to self. We minimize self so that God can work through us. We die to self, but God is saying he'll be all about pleasing his own needs. I'll just be playing a role, but then I heard the Lord say, but you love and preserve. And he was talking about me. What the Lord was saying by this part is that I preserve love, guys. To preserve something, the definition of preserve means to maintain something in its original or existing state. When I say I love you, I mean it. When I'm, whether it's a friendship or a marriage, but we're speaking from a marriage perspective, when I say my I do's and when I said my I do's and I told my ex-husband I loved him, I meant it. My love doesn't just go off like a light switch. It stays the same constantly day to day. I preserve love. I keep it in its original state, regardless of what he's going through, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of the fighting, regardless of arguments, regard, regardless of sickness, um, till death do us part. I meant that. I preserve love, meaning to preserve is to keep something in its original state. So regardless of what comes against me and my, my marriage or whatever the case may be, my love remains the same. It's agape love. 
It's love that's unconditional, without conditions. I preserve love because I choose to walk in God's image. So I choose to love like he loves. And he was showing my ex-husband he needs, okay? He needs. His love is based on conditions of his needs, what he desires, what he needs relief from. And I hope you guys are following me because I can't make this up. The Lord said he needs, but you love and preserve, okay? And so many of you that God is writing a new love story for, okay? Many of you were standing and God told you your stance is over. I'm writing you a new love story. Some of you were never married, but whoever he told you um, was your spouse, they forfeited their opportunity. But this does not mean these people aren't going to try to come back. But just know for who this is for, the Lord is saying they need, but you love and preserve. So they're going to seek you out. They're going to look for you, first of all, because many women, many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. So they can't forget about you. They can't get you off of their mind. You did your job to the T when you were in that marriage. You did your job to the T when you were in that relationship. You always showed kindness. You always preserved love. Always. Many have done well. Many daughters have done well, but you excelled them all. So they're going to come back because of um, who you are and that light shines bright over you. Okay, but they're also going to come back because they have needs and they have desires and they desire relief and you bring that relief. But just know that it's temporary. They want you to play the role. And when the role is done, when the movie's over, okay, they want you to take yourself in that toy train and go back home. It's a done deal. They want to play house. They still think as a child. They do not think as a man. Okay? And I'm actually going to read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 1 through 13. Okay? If I speak human or angelic tongues but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I give over my body in order to boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not arrogant, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not irritable, and does not keep record of wrongdoings. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Love ain't a movie role, okay? But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will come to an end. When the perfect comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. For now, we only see a reflection as in a mirror, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully as I am fully known. Now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these things is love. God told me my love preserves, meaning it stays in its original state regardless of what I'm dealing with, regardless of what people do to me, regardless of what day it is, regardless of how hot it is, regardless of how cold it is, regardless of what go, what's going on, the Lord told me my love preserves, means meaning it stays the same. It stays in its original state. Agape love without conditions. My love does not change. Love is a choice. When I love someone, I, I choose to love them. And I don't go back on that choice. Jesus chose to love us. He didn't feel like loving us. We didn't make Jesus feel love, slapping him, spitting on him, doing the most. He chose to love. You choose to love. Love is a choice, not a feeling. Feelings change. 
Love does not. But the Lord was telling me by this dream, he needs, but I love and preserve. But that dream is not just for me. Many of you are going to have the same things from your past that are gonna to try to come back. Why? Because many have done well, daughters, but you excel them all. They knew who you were. These people knew that God called them to be with you, but they forfeited their opportunities. That doesn't mean that they, they're not thinking about you. <laughs> that doesn't mean that they don't want to come and say their apologies and say their sorries and come back and do the most. That doesn't mean any of that. They will try to come back, but the Lord is saying, choose wisely. Do you want to play the role in a movie or do you want to play a real life role and be someone's wife and be able to love unconditionally and receive unconditionally? Or do you just want to play a role and once the movie's over, your role is finished? <sighs> then they're looking for the next person to fill a role. And it just repeats itself until they have that encounter with God that changes everything. When they were a child, they thought as a child. But when they become a man, they put away childish things. For many of you, that person is not there yet. <laughs> you're still riding that toy train to their house, okay? You're, you're getting prepped for a role. But God has more for you than just an acting role. You are a wife for my guys. You are a husband. Your, your husband will love you unconditionally. When the Lord gave me a dream and I saw the, the man proposed to me who the Lord later told me was my new love story. When he proposed to me, he said, I don't just want the marriage. I want the marriage and the wife. Okay, my ex-husband just wanted the marriage. He didn't want the wife. Few will catch that, but if you're spiritually mature and just mature in general, you'll understand. But that's all I have for this word, guys. I thought this was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, that's what the Lord is saying. So choose wisely. Do you want a movie role or do you want the real thing? Because God, he wants you to have the real deal. You, you deserve it. Love you guys. Have a good Wednesday. Bye.